guys had a good time today. We have a very special guest to wrap up our Saturday on the main stage. Gang, there are different levels of actors in this business. There are veterans, which is hard to be a veteran. Consistently doing good work, getting good work. Then there are legends, people who are legendary in their performances. And then, even above that, there are icons, people who are iconic. Like, they transcend entertainment and pop culture. Our next guest is an icon in the industry. You've seen him as a man in a taxi. You've seen him as a man in a DeLorean. And you've probably seen him in the Mandalorian here lately. Please, on your feet, give a big round of applause for Mr. Christopher Lloyd. So you guys, have, this is not new to you, but I'm going to go through it for those who made this your first panel today. Uh, this is a Q&A. This is designed for you to ask the questions you would like to ask. Um, we will get through as many as we can in the short time that we have together. I will tell you right now, we'll not get through all of them. That's my fault. I'm going to pass for keeping us on track. Um, the questions you don't get answered. You'll be at his table later today and tomorrow as well. You can get the questions answered there. You can get the autographs, all of that stuff at the table. So that's what we'll do that business. Um, in the meantime, if you would like to join the rest of these folks that are already lined up, this will be the microphone we'll use. Uh, step up to it, we'll ask your name and ask your question. As folks are, a few folks are making their way over there, I have to ask, you started in theater long before television and film. That's right. Is there something, was there a performance that drove you to say, that's what I want to do, that's what I want to do? Was there something that you saw, another performance by another actor, that made you think, like, yeah, that's, that's my call there? Um, well, there was a kind of way when I was uh, 12 years old, I was living in New York City, um, and uh, my mom, was so go see a movie called Hamlet. Shakespeare's classic, right? And you know, I, I had absolutely no idea who or what that was. And she was uncertain whether to take me with her to the movie to see this film because she might, she thought it might be disturbing to me that I might not understand it, etc. And um, it was a little bit like that in every way. <laughs> but uh, she took me. And I was just so uh, struck by it. The drama in it, the performance of Lawrence, Sir Lawrence and the VA. And, and I went out, I got the records. 78s, whatever that they were back then. And I kind of memorized the speeches, listened to it, and everything. So I was really struck dead by it. And when I look back, I think I was a little surprised that I was that struck by it because I didn't think that much about it. You know, that was all my mind that I wanted to be an actor. But that. That film struck me in a way that they had something to do with it. Very good. That's that. Uh, <laughs> so come up to the microphone with your question. Uh, give us your name, ask us a question, and we'll get through, like I said, as many of you as we can. Go ahead. Hey, Mr. Lloyd. My name is Mitchell. Welcome to Mississippi, by the way. Thank you. So, your background in the industry, do you think it was very true? Yes, I guess I did. I, I did a lot of it. And um, a lot of training, a lot of experience watching other actors and all that. But uh, what was I going to say? But, uh, what 
so much in this country. And there was a movement in the theater in New York to try to establish a, a national theater. And the discipline you were in those kind of theaters, you were expected to play maybe eight different roles over the course of six months. So you had to have flexibility, you had to be able to do character work. If you got this kind of guy, what, do you, what is his life about? What is he, how does he dress, how does he move, all that, how does he think, you know, all that stuff. So that, that was a trait, and that was kind of a goal at the time. And, and there was a national fear that was a, uh, at Lincoln Center, uh, which was a, you know, and there were others, I thought it's not fair, that, there were a lot of companies around the states. So uh, that had, uh, and this is technique, you know, I, I, I had to acquire a technique to do that. I went to school, I had, I had a great acting teacher, a legendary um, Sanford Meister, a great teacher. I kept doing it, you know, any chance I got to get up on stage, you know, that's what I, you know. Good question. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, step on up. What's your name? You can move it down. Yeah, please. Yeah. Crystal. Okay. Uh, my question is, what was it like filming the episode of NCIS and working with Mark Harmon? Oh, uh, that was extraordinary. In fact, that was something for some reason I thought about. That's where the gentleman wants to be. Uh, uh, yeah. This, for those that don't know, I, uh, I think I remember it pretty. It, it's. Uh, uh, he's a young uh, person in the Navy. And he wants to be, and his relative, his father, and somebody died at Pearl Harbor. Uh, he was a sailor. He was on one of a ship that was sunk in the harbor of Pearl. Uh, you know, and, you know, and afterwards, after the war, it was established that if you had been on that ship, when, when it was hit, you could be buried in the ship today. And a team of um, uh, sailors you know, with the gear, they would take your ashes or your body, I'm not sure if it was a, down and bury it in this ship that was sunk. It was a power, powerful script, and I, I, and I don't usually get parts like that. And I, I was thrilled to have a part, I just hoped I could live up to it. You know, so. yeah. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, step on up here. My name is John. You have played so many iconic characters over the years, whether it's Reverend Jim, Doc Brown, Judge Doom, you just to name a few. You were like, you alone were like 80% of my childhood. But then, <laughs> my question is, out of all the characters you played, which one would you say was closest to a self-portrait? Which character is most like? Which one is the closest to Christopher Lloyd in personality? Oh, that's a dangerous question. 
Um, which one is most likely? Uh, I want to know what the hell. Choose something that projects a good image. <laughs> Judge do. <laughs> um, I, I, oh, cool. I want to pick um, the character nicknamed Tames. <laughs> and one flew over the cuckoo's yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it had to be, it had to be very honest. That was my first film working with incredible people. And I, those traditionally, some actors don't make the transition from one to the other that is. And I was very aware of that. Um, and I couldn't be anything else but true, no matter how much I might resist to find some alternate. That's what I had to do because you know, Milo Schwarman, the director, would immediately let me any of us know when they were being honest or you know, to the point. So that's, that was good to me. So I, I, I go back to that because from there on, I mean, a wonderful things have come for me to do, but they involve other, you know, makeup, fancy, costume, you know. That just relied on the person, whoever he was. The way I see it. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. You're nervous? You want me to come hold your hand? Here, I'll hold your hand for you. Might be sweaty. Okay. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's okay. Let's make it quick. Well, I'll say, first of all, I'm his wife, and I'd like to wish him a happy birthday. For Anna. He wanted to see you for his birthday. This is a birthday come true. We love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. The show Psych, when you guys did the Clue episode, but you recently also had a walk-on scene uh, with James Rodriguez on A Million Little Things. Um, what was it like working with him again, but also what was it like working on that episode? Because your walk-on scene, playing yourself, was a huge wow factor in that episode, the Father's Day episode. I, I just thought it was, a, it was a fun, a fun idea, you know, uh, and it was playful, it had a real kind of uh, charm about it, fun, you know, it's fun. and um, I just I Having, having uh, Jim, uh, Reverend Jim, in the episode in the beginning, and then just popping that up on the audience is kind of fun. So it's a good reunion. Yes. <laughs> it was all good. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Happy birthday, John. Yeah. Hi, come on down. What's your name? Of course, the three 
songs about the future. I'm not saying I enjoy that a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, 
Pull that microphone towards you. There you go. Hello, all. Uh, my name's Ryder, and I have two questions. If you got stuck in a certain time, what would you do? Which time is it? 1738. All right. So, <laughs> that's very specific, right? <laughs> if you were stuck in 1738, is that right? If you were stuck in 1738, what would you Did do? Go back to the 1800s. In 1738. 1738. 17. Oh yeah. Pre. Pre. Revolutionary War. 1738. Salute the British and go about his business. <laughs> it's a big year. <laughs> Bob, what would I... Oh, I don't know. I'd... I'd uh... <laughs> I'd recover. Stumped him on that one. I don't know. I don't know. Uh... Stay alive. <laughs> Can you get a second question? Well, it's 1739 now. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, the, if you didn't make the DeLorean, and what would you think? Well, if Marty decided to <laughs> destroy the DeLorean for a So would Doc be mad at Marty if he just destroyed the DeLorean, but he had a good reason? Well, didn't the DeLorean get destroyed? Wasn't Doc yeah, it asking did. Marty to destroy it? Like for at least two of the three movies? <laughs> <laughs> I got hit by the train. Yeah. Yeah, it turned into a train. You remember now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good job. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm uh, Brody. My question is, if you had the DeLorean in your possession at this moment in time, what would you do with it? That's a good one. Oh, I do it. <sighs> Destroy it. <laughs> I'm gonna guess travel in time. I don't know. I don't know. I might not mind going ahead. Or so. See if we're still here. Yeah. There's so much going on these days. I like to see how it all plays out. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Tim. Uh, my name's Abel. Thank you for coming to Mississippi, by the way. Uh, my question is if you. Did you or. The director of the Back to the Future ever discuss like a fourth one? Or if you were given the opportunity, would you do a fourth one? I'm, I'm sure if it was, uh, you know, Bob Gale and lots of that just put together a script, I'd, I'd be happy to do it. I think all of us would. I mean, I, I'm sure it would have to be a great, great script. So I'll be more than do it. Woo! Good job. Good question. Write letters. <laughs> Send in your spec scripts. I hear nobody's moving pens and paper right now. So. <laughs> hey, what's your name? My name's Jeremy. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say I appreciate the movie you did. Oh. Uh, once again, like some others, it's part of my childhood. Uh, I like really loved you as Professor Plum and Clue. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's, yeah, it was incredible when, when we shot it. Uh, I was working with amazing people, you know, established and brilliant, and so talented and all that, and they scripted it. And so on. And when it opened, as I recall, it didn't have, you know, it wasn't like a big smashing hit. Here it was more popular in England than it was here, but a 
And under that makes sense, it's kind of a... Well, I, today, more people have come up to me and said, oh, I'm, how they love Clue than any other people that have come up to me. I mean, it's just, it's hugging there, you know. Well, I do have one question, and as well as a compliment. Uh, you played a lot of crazy or evil characters uh, early in your So career. what? <laughs> 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 it feels like you were typecast uh, earlier in your career. I guess I have been in some kind of way, but I, I don't feel it's... Messing up my, you know, I, 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 things come out of that that may have, uh, you know, some, uh, some association with, it, with that. And, but it's a different story, a different character, you know. So, yeah, it comes up. Well, I appreciate your acting. Thank you. Well, thank you. Hi, right, come on in. What is your name? Um, my name is Julius. Okay, and hey, what's your question? <laughs> you, will you hold your hand? <laughs> not afraid to. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, at, <laughs> uh, as an actor, what are your favorite villains to play as? And um, I always want to be an actor and a voice actor. When, some of my favorite are when you play as a villain from Anastasia and uh, Master Signor from Kim Hearts, including the uh, headless, headless teacher. I forgot the name of the Professor Beans. <laughs> Professor Beans. So, what was the question about that? What is it like playing as a villain? Is it fun? More fun playing Do as a villain? Do you enjoy being a villain more so than a heroic character? Is that what you're asking? The villains get the I, best I, part, right? I feel it's kind of the, the same. There is a certain, there is a certain edge to the not so good guy. You know, there's, there's, it's fun to play you know, that play, but, uh, I think I, the, the, the challenge to be a whatever it is, good or bad, a uh, character is that to so bring them to life, you know, and make them real, and so the audience can connect and say, yeah, I know what that's about, you know. Uh, that, that goes both ways. It's almost like each one of them is misunderstood. Each one of the villains are misunderstood. Yeah, the villains you portray are typically just misunderstood heroes of their own story as opposed to more malignant, yeah. mustache-twirling... I think they're right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I believe this is going to have to be our final question, so come on up. What is your name? Dakota. And Dakota, what is your question? Do you have a favorite memory from filming Angels in the Outfield and uh, Roger Rabbit? Woo! Favorite memories from Angels in the Outfield or Roger Rabbit? I miss Jessica Rabbit. Who would it? That's. Uh, what can I say now? Yeah. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good question. Have you guys had a good time today? <laughs>